whole week. How have you, how have you found it, Mark? Yeah, it's been good. Yeah, it was uh, a little bit difficult with uh, the pitches initially. Certainly, uh, when I arrived last week, uh, the only thing available was the 4G because it's been a lot of rain now. We're, we're by uh, a river, so uh, there's some problems with the pitches. But the, they seem to have resolved themselves. We've had a couple of good days on, on the grass, which was important. And uh, yeah, some good work put into the guys. The, I'm pleased with what I've, I've seen. Good enthusiasm for the work as well. And um, no little qualities. So uh, yeah, looking forward to the weekend. Man. Good stuff. It's, it, it's, we touched on the occasion, didn't we, on Saturday, but ultimately results are results. What have you, uh, the, the days off that Mansfield game, what have you taken from that and what, what have you worked on going into Sweden? Well, I think I mentioned before the game that we weren't going to change things radically overnight because that wouldn't, that wouldn't make sense and it wouldn't have been fair to the guys either because they've been used to playing possibly in a different way to how I imagine us to play. Uh, maybe in 12 months' time, so uh, we'll get there in good time, but uh, it's not going to happen overnight. So uh, um, we've just started to introduce a few ideas in terms of what we do in certain situations to enable us to maybe return the ball a little bit better than than we, we have done us earlier at the weekend. Uh, at times, it, uh, the ball was changing hands a little bit too readily for my liking. So when that happens, um, you don't have the control that you need. So uh, we will try and improve that aspect of our play. And that's, that will improve as we, we work together and repetition of the work that we do in training, obviously, will we'll start to impact and then we'll start to improve, hopefully. As, aside from like Mansfield and like with the work that Nigel's done at Mansfield, is that almost like a benchmark for you going forward to what you want to do here? Well, it's like anything. Uh, managers have been in charge of a team for a reasonable or significant amount of time. We'll, we'll always um, have a footprint or fingerprint on the group that they're working with and, and you'll be able to see elements of of play that you know that the manager wants to see in his team so that's obviously what has happened to me in the past with, with teams I've had so we've uh, had an identity and that's what I'm hoping that we'll be able to very quickly put into Bradford. Glyn's come in for those who may be listening later or reading later who don't know much about Glyn. Can you give us a, a little insight? Well, Glyn, I've, I've known since, uh, well, youth days, and well, it's a long time. So <laughs> he's a uh, he's very accomplished coach. He's, he's been with me for um, almost all the clubs I've been involved in, actually, at a Premier League level. So um, he's got a good understanding of of the top level, but uh, the attraction for me obviously is his experience of uh, the lower levels in, in the football pyramid and he's obviously worked at League One, League, League Two as well, so that was important in terms of my decision. So uh, I've known him a long time, he's, he's a good guy, accomplished coach and uh, he will help obviously not only in terms of what we do on the training pitch but um, giving me an insight into opposition and, and in terms of recruitment as well, so uh, his input this year certainly will be will be valuable. Are there a couple of his strengths then, like recruitment and opposition analysis, and, and if not, what, what other strengths does he bring? Well, uh, I think first and foremost, he's, he's a very good coach. Um, he's, he's coached senior players, he's coached youth team players, young development players, so uh, he's got a good understanding of, of what's required. So. Uh, I trust him clearly, he's uh, someone I've known for a long time and we've got a good relationship with, so uh, yeah, it's, uh, I've not worked with him as him being my number two, but I've no issue or worries about that because, like I said, I've known him for so long. And looking ahead, a couple of injuries, I'm thinking uh, Jamie Walker's been out recently, Leanne Gold, the previous manager, said would hopefully see Lee before the end of the season. How, how are those two getting on with some very similar injuries? Uh, Jamie's uh, progressing very well, he's had a couple of sessions, we'll obviously make a decision. Um, might be a little bit too soon this weekend, but uh, we'll, we'll see how he is. We, we've introduced him slowly this week and 
thankfully he hasn't had a reaction as yet. But uh, we'll be cautious with, with all players come back from injury because we don't obviously want them to re-injure themselves by, by virtue of doing too much too soon. So uh, we'll look after them. Lee, we haven't seen anything of because his injury is, is going to be a lot longer before it resolves itself. So we're, we're not going to see him for a while. But uh, um, the rest of the group is reasonably sound, I would say. There's um, obviously number still in the treatment room, but um, we'll get them back as soon as we can. But like I said, we'll, we'll look after them when they come in. We'll try and introduce them slowly, give them the right amount of work to enable them to be sound so that they can go full tilt. I want to ask you about Alex Gilliard as well. He's been playing more of like a wing back kind of role recently. And when we opened up the phones after the show, some of the fans were like, wow, he's like a player reborn in that role. What have you made of Alex? Alex is a very good footballer, first and foremost. And I think that's sometimes when players actually play out of position or in a different position and, and they do well usually it's because they're a good footballer and they can adapt and they can handle the football so irrespective of where they're playing on the pitch uh, it's the fact by virtue of being a good player they're able to cope so uh, that's the case with Alex he's able to understand what's required in, in the role that's asked of him and I'm quite confident that I, I feel that if I played him in a, any number of positions he, he'd give a good account of himself because uh, he's he's a technically accomplished player so um, yeah we're pleased to see it. There's a number of players isn't there in the squad who are out of contract in the summer a lot of the time at this level a lot to prove going into the last few weeks of the season can you tell that from the group that they're here and they they want to prove that point and they want to be here to stay? Well, yeah I, I don't see any uh, marked difference in any of the players attitudes in terms of the work and, and trying to be part of what we're doing here irrespective of what the, the future holds for for some some will remain here, others will, will move on, that's the reality of this, this league, but um, you know, the, the work I've seen up to this point has been excellent, so uh, that's good and that's reassuring, uh, they all want to be part of what we're doing from now to the end of the year at least, so uh, um, let's tap into that and see where it takes us. And just lastly, going into Saturday, what have you made of Swindon in, in your analysis going forward? They did a good another football tough game. Yeah, another tough, tough one. Yeah, they're doing, doing well at the moment. And um, yeah, they're good football inside. They like to knock it about and uh, got good individual talent that uh, has an influence on the game. So uh, we're, we'll obviously make the players aware of, of what they're good at, what they're maybe not so good at, obviously. And, those are the, the points and the areas that we'll hope to exploit. But uh, no, I've been impressed, obviously. I've watched their games and um, we'll continue to watch them right up to the game. And um, yeah, they're they impressed in terms of the, of the way they approach the game. So uh, maybe slightly different from Mansfield, albeit Mansfield at times would play their, their football when they could. Um, but yeah, another test, slightly different test, but I think that's, that's the case at this level. We spoke to Luke Pedri earlier and he said one of the key things you've been saying to players is to calm down and take their time with the ball. Is, is it the case that they may be been trying too hard and, and forcing errors that they don't need to make? Yeah, I think, that, I think that's a good point made. I think that's the case. Um, they, they're so desperate to do well that um, yeah, the, their work at times can be a little bit frenetic and chaotic because they are trying hard, they, they're giving everything they got and uh, at times it's, it's energy that could be better used sometimes. Sometimes they, they work exceptionally hard but actually uh, it's in the wrong direction and in, in the wrong way. So sometimes you've just got to take a step back and, and understand how we can be more effective and more dynamic when it really counts, which is at the top end of the pitch. So uh, if we can obviously be a team that recognises those moments where we can be really dynamic, that's when we'll affect the opposition. If you keep on doing the same things at the same pace, then teams get set and ready for you and then it becomes difficult to, to break them down. So it's about being unpredictable, uh, being dynamic and creating problems at the top end. Do you think that's maybe where your experience working at a higher level, you can tell the players how it works there and get them to try? Well, well that's, that's, that's my... That's my history, that, that, that's what I've been exposed to uh, as a player and as a manager. And as I said when I, when I got the job, I think my, my skill set is transferable. I have no reason to think that. Uh, that other than that, I think um, there's times when 
you, you have to retain possession, you, you have to start again, and uh, that allows you just to uh, uh, get a better structure and better shape to your team sometimes. Uh, if you keep on forcing things and trying to make things happen, that the reality is is that it's you've pushing the envelope too much people because it's a percentage of success by constantly going in one area and not not maybe using the space that's available to you is, is there for everyone to see. So so I think they understand that and I'll go back to one of my first points, it's not about changing them overnight because that's that's dangerous <laughs> if I'm if I'm honest. So we're we're trying to do it at the, the right pace. Uh, introduce the right ideas so that they can take them on board in good time and then be able to um, use them because they've done the work in, in training and had that repetition that you need. Um, and when we become a team that does the good things well and we do things not without thought because everything we do is with thought, but um, when we become a team that the majority do things automatically, um, that's usually the point where you start to become more, a more progressive and effective team. Yeah. Um, yeah, um, as the week's gone on, the players are getting more receptive to, to what you're trying to bring in. Can you sense that? Yeah, I'm, I'm just gauging on the enthusiasm and the quality of the work at the moment. Um, I'm a realist and I understand. Once I start picking teams on a regular basis, I might upset a few. So that's the reality of the job. So uh, at the moment, uh, maybe. Um, I'm the friend to everybody, but uh, so I, I, be really yeah, good. quite possibly. But uh, I think I think they understand that I'm here to try and make them better. I think they they understand that these elements of the way I work that's slightly different to to what they've been exposed to of late. So um, mm -hmm. if they've got anything about them, they'll embrace that and uh, try and improve because. Mm -hmm. Every single day we come to training, we want to improve, and that's that's a prerequisite. So, uh, um, so if they embrace the work, uh, that's the end product. That's there's no doubt they'll they'll improve. Shouldn't be if they're doing something a bit different. It's, it's probably more enjoyable, isn't it? Because it, if it's sort of different to what they've been used to, slightly, you know, yeah, I'm not, I'm, a bit. Listen, we're, we're putting drills on that. That's, I'm sure they've seen before, but it's anybody can put a drill on it. But it's how it's managed and how. The, the work that you see is is um, monitored, so to speak, in, in terms of you. It's got to be the, it might be the same drill, but it's no good if it's done poorly. So it is it's about having those demands and standards in terms of work uh, that enables the individual and the team to to grow. Um, and that only comes from good quality work. I'm, I'm not in into quantity. Um, I'm not interested in loads and loads of bad work that doesn't make any sense I'm into quality work good work that will improve players and, and if I get what I want on occasions uh, don't say it too loud I'll, I'll cut things short because I'm happy with what I got so uh, it's all about quality from my point of view and, and, from, and from your point of view what, what do you feel you've learned so much in this in this sort of first few days I'm really impressed with the guys in terms of um, Certainly in the game itself, the amount of energy they expend is, is huge and uh, that's right across the board sometimes. Certainly at the top level you can get some players that will conserve energy to, to the nth degree and then you finish the game and you wonder what, what they were doing. So uh, I haven't seen any of that. Everyone puts a shift in. Uh, that's, that's a given, uh, clearly. And I've seen that both in the opposition last week and I'm sure I'll see it in the opposition this week along with ourselves. So the, it's a very honest league in terms of attitude and, and application, guys give what they've got and for the most part if, if they do that I'll, I'll be happy with them. Um, in terms of Swindon, um, Ben Garner obviously is, is coaching history to the higher levels. Have you come across him at all? Or? I don't know Ben personally but um, yeah, he's had uh, a good career uh, progression so uh, he's certainly got his team going at the moment so uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to go up against different coaches. That's part of the attraction, part so of the, that's the interest. A young, a young coach getting on. Yeah, yeah, and you, you always hope that young coaches uh, cutting their teeth uh, in the lower level will get opportunities higher up the, the pyramid, but uh, it's not always the case, unfortunately, because, uh, yeah, maybe uh, the ownership of, of certain clubs uh, doesn't allow that, because uh, 
for whatever reason, it doesn't. We don't seem to be that attractive British coaches, mm -hmm. albeit um, sometimes I feel we're we're a much better option. But uh, but there you go. I wish him well. And in terms of the game itself, obviously you haven't got so much of the sort of hoop glass around in it for yourself. Are you, are you perhaps going to say enjoy it more? But can you sort of is it, is it going to be easier to focus without so much of the pantomime going on around? Uh, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure I'll enjoy it. I'll enjoy it more if we win, clearly. That <laughs> goes without saying. But the actual day itself, well, I told you after the game, I enjoyed every minute of it. And uh, um, that's my hope this weekend as well. Um, the emotions and what this game does to you on a match day is great. It's something I've always enjoyed. So we're uh, looking forward to going through that again.